Hey guys, welcome back to the VoIP guys. Uh, as we said last time, we are going to take a look at uh, our IVR um, options that we can build in the Asterix systems. Mm -hmm. um, but before we start, we're just going to have a quick look at a blog post that we put together um, a few months ago, which is actually on IVR best practices. And it's well worth a read, so you can have a quick look through it and see mm -hmm. uh, where we can go, uh, what the best ideas uh, for how many options to have, and so on and so on. Now, we've got a bit of a simple one there with a, a fruit and veg store uh, with bananas that are too green or too straight. Mm -hmm. um, but here, yeah, you can see we've got how many options um, you should have, and this is all based on research from software advice in the United States. Um, so it definitely provides a good guideline for what you can go through. And also, if you are asking any questions, you're getting the customers to do self-service uh, or so on, then the type of questions you should use mm -hmm. uh, as well. Um, so it's definitely worth going into that and having a look. Um, but now we're going to show you how to do that. Um, yes, I think we should talk about the most common mistakes in this tutorial. Yeah. So, um, sure, read our blog article, which mm -hmm. is great. We have also infographics for that, what yeah, we do. for the do's and don'ts and stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, read it, it's a <laughs> good idea um, to just read it. Um, but I think now we should talk about what is an IVR in detail. Mm -hmm. and the most common mistakes we know from our everyday life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, for what is an IVR, maybe somebody does not know, it's just the very annoying menu that you get <laughs> in many cases, yeah. um, which asks you press 1 for support, press mm -hmm. 2 for sales, press 3 for nothing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, that's an IVR menu. Um, now you could say I don't want an IVR menu because it sucks, and <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure that it's also not good for my customers. That's true. It's in some cases true. So mm -hmm. if you can avoid IVR menus, then avoid them. Yeah. For instance, um, if somebody calls your sales team. Mm -hmm. The best idea is to talk to a salesperson as soon as possible, yeah. without a greeting, without mm -hmm. anything, just dude, dude, hello, what can I do for you? Exactly. That's the best situation, yeah. I think. Yeah, and uh, for example, you could take it a step further, like for example, if you're running a prestige hotel, mm -hmm. um, somebody calls you, they expect to speak to somebody. Mm -hmm. They don't expect to get a machine telling them what options to press and so yes, on. Yes, they could use the internet for the booking. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, there's definitely certain things to look at there. Yes. So, my first tip is avoid them as often as you can. <laughs> okay. Um, the second thing is, when do you really need them? I think, um, for instance, if you are dividing between languages, yeah. press mm -hmm. one for German, press two for English, yeah. you could do it in another way that you say, okay, I want to catch the caller ID number, and then I know from which country he's calling, and then I don't need to ask him which language are you speaking. But that doesn't work yeah, everywhere. That's true. Um, because of the, the numbers, mm -hmm. you can put, you can um, carry them away with you, yeah. the number. And the next thing is, you have countries with different languages in one mm -hmm. country. Yeah. Switzerland, for instance. Or uh, South Tyrol, or uh, in the US with Spanish-speaking customers. Like this. So you mm -hmm. cannot... Um, uh, it's not a good idea no. um, to rely in every case on the caller ID number. Mm -hmm. And then I think it's a good idea to ask for the language, because um, if you are if you're talking if you're listening to the wrong language which you don't understand, it's like encrypted for you. Yeah, you're just gonna hang up. Yeah. So I think this is a one uh, one case where you could use them. Okay. Mm -hmm. Or I think to speed things up, I make an example. If you have a support queue uh -huh. and there are just no more support guys and they are phoning all the day, then you could say, okay, you need more employees, uh -huh. but maybe it just does not work now. Yeah. Then you could, could do, I think, some convenience thing. You're waiting and then you ask a question. Do you want to wait longer uh -huh. or not? Or do you want to um, leave a message uh -huh. or give some information and the customer can choose what to do, options, what to do. Yeah. I mm -hmm. think this is a good idea. A bad idea is, in any case, when somebody calls, I make a long greeting. Hello, welcome to my company. We are the greatest <laughs> in the world, blah, 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 blah. And then IVR menu, if you want to talk to sales, please press one, blah, blah, blah. And then he presses one and then he says, 
please provide your customer number, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, if you need information from the customer, you should try to get that first. Yes. Yeah. Things like this. So avoid it where you can and only for, I think, customer convenience use IVR menus. Okay. And then I think they don't suck. Right. There you go. Otherwise, they do. <laughs> no, there's nothing more annoying than a badly set up IVR. That's true. All right. So, what are we going to do now then? We're going to have a look at how to int- uh, set them up, or is that next time around? Yeah, that's next time around. Okay. Fair so, enough. So, think about what we said. Go read the blog post. Have a <laughs> look at the, the, blog post. Um, the uh, infographic that we designed. And then, when we're ready, we'll set them up for you. Yes. Cheers. Thanks. Bye. Bye.